Hey everyone, it's Anna. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for visiting. I was recently asked if I would do another demonstration of the vintage watercolor technique, which uses uh, a distress ink or an, a water reactive ink to stamp your image on watercolor paper. And then you add um, areas of the Elegant Writer black ink to your stamped image. And then you use a uh, paintbrush with just plain water uh, to paint your image and see how the um, interesting colors from the Distress Ink and the Elegant Writer um, work together to, to color the image. You can also use uh, watercolor pencils in um, addition to add some more color to your painting. Um, I like to use the Ink Tense pencils because they are pretty saturated in color so you don't have to add a lot of um, product to get a big bang for your buck and uh, once they dry they're also permanent so you can add additional layers on top of them as well. So <clears throat> I thought I would go ahead and do another demonstration but first I wanted to mention too that some of you have said that you have had troubles with the elegant writers performing the way that they um, do in my videos so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and test the three elegant writers that I have to see if the ink reacts uh, to water the way that I would expect it to and then also um, just to be sure that um, if you're getting different products than I have here um, I have purchased three sets um, of pens from Amazon. They just came in yesterday. Um, so I purchased the four set of um, 2.0, 2.5, and 3.0 millimeters. There must be a fourth one in there that's a different size. Um, and then I also purchased a separate 2.0 millimeter and 2.5 millimeter. So I thought I would purchase these so that I could see if what you're getting off of Amazon is the same as what I have purchased or in my own stash. But I'm pretty sure that my 2.0 millimeter um, came from Amazon. So I think, I, or the 2.5 I think. Because um, I know I had two and I'm pretty sure the 2.5 millimeter was uh from Amazon. But we'll go ahead and test the three that I have um, in my stash because I know two of these I purchased at an art supply store. And then um, I'll go ahead and test these th um, the three different packages that I got from Amazon yesterday as well. And then uh, once I have that under my belt, then at some point I'll do another demonstration of the vintage watercolor technique and a complete card. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so first of all, you're going to want to use Distress Ink or a water reactive ink. This one is my favorite. So just keep that in mind. And you're going to want to use um, a good watercolor paper. This is Distress Watercolor Paper. So it's really smooth on one side and watercolor texture on the other. You could also use artist grade watercolor paper as well. But you want to make sure that you're using a good watercolor paper. Um, you're then just going to need a paintbrush and some clear water. So let's go ahead and get started.
So all of these pens um, bleed out the way that I would expect the Speedball um, calligraphy pens in black to pull out. Um, so I'm not sure if, if those of you who are having trouble, um, if you actually have a Speedball pen, I'm not sure what the issue is. Um, hopefully you're um, able to try it again and maybe, maybe by ensuring that you're using watercolor paper um, and not laying down a super thick line like this, but more like this. This is how I would do it in a stamped image. I used really the edge of the pen, not the full uh, breadth, width of the chisel. Um, so here, I'll just go ahead and show you a stamped image and how I would stamp it. Let's see, I have another piece of watercolor paper here. So again, this is Ranger's uh, Distress Watercolor Paper. Um, I have this stamp here on my desk. Um, I'll just go ahead and use this one. This is from, uh, I can't read the artist, um, but this, oh, Deadbeat Designs. This is from Deadbeat Designs and they've um, had their stamps sold at Stamp Salado in Salado, Texas. So this is just a really beautiful uh, blue bonnet image. Um, so I'll go ahead and stamp that. I'll use my uh, Distress ink to ink the image. my stamp positioner because ideally um, what I like to do is um, if too much of the stamped image um, washes away into the color I like to be able to stamp it again either in like a brown or black um, once the painting is dry so I'll go ahead and get that a good stamp there with my positioner so I can stamp it in the same spot again next time um, in fact my ink pad is kind of dry so I think I'm going to stamp it one more time the beauty of using a stamp positioner is that it allows you to stamp your image in the exact same spot a second time. And by positioning it in the corner of my paper here, if I want to go back and stamp it again later, I know exactly how to place my um, paper. Okay, so that looks good. Now I'm going to use... Um, I'm just going to use, let's see, the 1.3. This is a relatively small image, so I'll go ahead and zoom in here so you can see how much color I actually add. Okay. Um, even though this is the really small, elegant writer, it has just a really small 1.3 millimeter tip, I just really use the corner of it. So, and I don't add a whole bunch, I just add little bits of it here and there. where I think I'm going to want that pigment, that darker pigment, uh, to be on the image. So you can see I don't add a whole bunch, just, just little bits here and there. I'll add some down there as well. Now, I'll just show you what it looks like. I'm just using the um, Distress Ink and the Elegant Writer. I won't add any additional colored pencil to this um, image. So I'm gonna start up here at the top. Can you guys see? Yeah. And I'm just adding uh, water. and filling in that painted image. And if I feel like my paintbrush has picked up uh, too much color, I can go ahead and um, dab it in water and clear it off. I think this is a really fun technique because it's so unexpected. The results that you get um, are gonna be different every time. I think that's kind of exciting. And it's fun to watch the um, the inks and that those uh, black pigments kind of form uh, patterns and things like that. Now if you want to keep um, a little bit more definition between your shapes, uh, you can paint um, 
shapes that and keep a one space or two spaces in between and let those somewhat dry before moving on to one that touches it and that will keep that pigment from running into um, the other sections here so they play within their own lines <laughs> This is a really fun technique. I first learned about it on Split Coast Stampers. Um, it was done as a technique um, in the technique forum there. And uh, I'm so glad that I caught that because I, um, you know, I don't catch all of those. But it's um, really enjoyable. So I'll go ahead and move on to these little leaves down here. The Texas Blue Bonnet has such pretty little star leaves. It's like, I'd say, um, it's a lupin. So it has those beautiful star leaves like the other lupins do. Okay, now that I've done that, I'll go back up and um, do some of these other areas. And because these um, areas that I've painted previously have dried now, or mostly dried, the new areas I'm painting won't bleed over into the, um, the other sections as much. Also going to add some water to the outside edge. No, I didn't add any of the um, Speedball Elegant Rider on the outside edge here, so this is just Stress Ink. soften that edge a little bit okay so that's how that technique works and then if you want to add watercolor pencils as well you can do that uh, while you're painting in the image and that's a really great way of adding additional colors but that's how the technique works so I think it's really lovely isn't the, aren't the colors really pretty so I think it's so pretty but um, if you're having trouble with your um, pens reacting um, to water, make sure you're using watercolor paper and be sure you're using just a thin line um, and you make sure you're using a reactive ink to stamp your image as well. And um, I didn't have any trouble. These all pulled out as, a, as I would expect them to. Like I said earlier, I wouldn't necessarily add this much pigment to a stamped image. Um, that would be really overwhelming for an image, especially this size. Um, that's why I kind of prefer the 1.3 millimeter or the 2.5 and I just use a corner um, but yeah these all performed as expected so I'm not sure um, what issues you may be having with your pens but hopefully this um, maybe uh, gives you some ideas to help uh, try and resolve those issues so hope this was helpful thanks so much for watching and I will do another um, example of this technique on with a completed card soon so thanks for the request thanks everyone have a good night